we're midway through the year. Give us a, a sense of how you're feeling right now about the state of, of, of markets. Right. I think we're in a lull. I think we're in a, a lull that's affected by a lot of emotion and a lot of exogenous events. We've got a lot of new sound bites coming in from Europe, from China, and about our general economy. People are looking for a trend, and because of that, the market's stagnating right here, and we're seeing a lot of up and down, but no consistent direction one way or the other. And do you expect this to continue as we get through to the second half of the year, going through the end of the year? I do think that we're going to see more of this this summer and that this will extend out as we continue to get news from Europe. And we are waiting on the political front as well. And so I think we're seeing a lot of holding back. And in many ways, this is a rerun of what we saw last summer. Uh -huh. Let's uh, drill down into some of these pieces. The jobs picture doesn't look that great right now for the U.S., and we get uh, some jobs data next week. How are you looking at that, and how will markets look at that? Yeah, the jobs data does not look great, and it is making, I think, a lot of opportunity in consumer because that's flowing through. At the same time, uh, while people are looking towards the consumer and are they employed, are they not, who can spend, don't forget we have oil prices coming down quite a bit, which helps offset some of that compression. The jobs market is a big number and a big emotional impact to the market. As that number stays down and isn't robust, it definitely puts a pall over things. Mm -hmm. And what are you seeing in the consumer space? Are people actually spending? spending those savings from gas prices? I think it's a good time to be shopping and to take a look at some of these stocks because I think some of the companies are undervalued for what they represent. The consumer is still out there shopping, but in very specific areas. And so I think if you hunt, you can find those areas. And definitely, Americans like to spend. It's something we do well, and we're going to continue to do that. We're just getting a little more finicky about where we put our money. Uh, are there any particular areas where you're seeing people actually going out and spending in the consumer space? You know, I think a great example is smartphones. Uh -huh. How many people have how many, do you have a smartphone? I bet I you do. do. How many uh -huh. people do you know have gotten a smartphone and the accessories that go with it in the last year? That's been a huge trend. You're also seeing a trade down into the dollar stores, people looking for things in more value price stores and on bargains. So I think you've got, a, a, if it, in effect, a barbell of the consumer on where they're spending. When you look at your portfolio, how much of that is taking a hit as a result of events overseas in Europe or in China, and how much is that affecting it? I think the overall portfolio and the overall market is affected by that. It definitely sets a trend on the direction uh, for, for everything. And so no individual company can manage to be completely immune to that because the psychology is overwhelming. I do think that you can pick pockets of companies that perhaps have less European exposure, have less uh, Asia exposure, and are more domestic. But psychologically, they're going to suffer right now, too, because the markets just can't get past that news soundbite that's coming across. Uh -huh. And how long do you think they'll take to, to get through some, something like that? So I think we're in for CHOP, that up and mm -hmm. down, up and down movement in the market for the next three months. I think the European summit that's coming up uh, tomorrow uh -huh. and at the end of this week is going to be a lot of news, but a lot of news towards nothing. I think the market is showing you that people are sitting on the sidelines waiting for buying opportunities and recognize that they think there's going to be a solution but that there's no immediate solution. Right, it's going to get fixed somehow, but they're not sure how They're yet. just not expecting it right now. Right. And so companies are obviously sitting and, and watching this. They've got their, their piles of cash. Are the companies that you're looking at, how are they dealing with this situation when they're sitting on cash? It's very interesting to talk to management teams of these companies because the managements continue to hold back. They recognize they have more cash than they've ever had before. For the well-positioned companies, it's very easy to go out and get debt financing in the markets because uh -huh. debt is not expensive right now. And yet the CEOs are very reluctant to spend because there's an uncertainty that pervades on what's going to happen on the political front. How will taxes change? How will health care costs change? So they're very reluctant to make big moves that cause them to go out and hire a lot more people. And wh what lessons do they take and what lessons do you take from some of the issues we've seen over the last two or three years with the debt ceiling debacle in Washington and the events with Europe the last couple of years? Has that weighed on you a lot as you look at all this? I think as a portfolio manager, it certainly weighed on me in terms of looking at what kind of return can I expect from the market and what's my time frame. I think you have to be very sensitive to your time frame expectations going into the market now. It's very hard to be a short-term investor given the uncertainty in the near term three to six months out. Mm -hmm. I think if you have a three to five year horizon, it's a lot easier because you can see, you know there's a resolution coming. You're not quite sure how it develops, but it'll get here. And you can see some companies that are taking that cash and spending it very well on strategic moves, uh -huh. acquiring other 
businesses, et cetera, positioning themselves to be the winners three and five years out. Yeah. In a couple of days, uh, the country is going to be gripped by this health care decision from the Supreme Court. How is that going to weigh on uh, the health care sector and the you market know, overall? The health care sector in general has been very depressed because of the uncertainty. Markets hate uncertainty. So anytime you have an unknown in the, in the immediate future, you get somebody backing off and what they're willing to pay for these companies. Health Corps has been suppressed. I think health care represents opportunity, but health care is all about timing. There's no quick resolution to that either. So while these companies, I think, represent value right now, it's value that won't be extracted or appreciated in the market for several years. So when you look at this and you see landmines coming up uh, over the next three to six months, uh, you want to look past all of that, but isn't there a case to be made for trying to, to wait this out and not get too heavy in the market until you get through some of these these points? Well, I think that's what you're seeing in the market right now, is that you're seeing yesterday, the past couple of days, we've seen a very orderly sell-off. A lot of people are waiting on the sidelines. We're not seeing huge flows into stocks right now. People are taking their time and being very patient because they recognize that it is a summer filled with landmines. Mm -hmm. And when you look ahead to, uh, say, six months down th the road, when you're looking at the end of 2012, yes. do you think we're going to feel better or worse about the state of markets? I think we're going to feel better. Uh, because I think that the, the worst news is coming now. And in many respects, again, this is a rerun of what we did last summer. We had a huge reaction when we had this con confluence of negative events last summer. Bad news from China, bad news from Europe, bad, you know, uncertainty on the political front. Very similar, all the same themes that we're facing right now. But because it's a rerun this time, our emotional reaction isn't quite as severe. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Susan, thank you very much for joining us. Susan Schmidt from Mesero, uh, Mesero Financial. Uh, we're uh, really excited to have you here with us today. Today. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again soon.